Okay, in this problem we're asked to find the max and min of f on our compact region E, where f of x, y, z is given as x squared plus y squared minus z squared minus x minus y. And E is the closed right cylinder, where x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 3, and z is between negative 4 and 4. So we have a little sketch of our closed right cylinder centered around the origin. Z goes from negative 4 to 4, and our disk is of radius, uh, oh, I think this should be 3 squared. So that should be, yeah, 3 squared. So our disk is of radius 3. Okay, so we want to first find our critical points of our function f of x, y, z, and see if any of those critical points are on the interior of our uh, region E. So first, we'll take a gradient vector. of our function f of x, y, z. And we get negative 2x minus 1, or sorry, positive 2x minus 1, 2y minus 1, and negative 2z. And we want to set this equal to 0. And we see that by setting each of the components equal to 0, we have single critical point, and that occurs when x is equal to 1 half, y is equal to 1 half, and z is equal to 0. So clearly um, this point lies within our region E, so we'll go ahead and mark that down. We'll keep a, leaf, uh, we'll keep a list over here of our po points. that we want to consider for our um, function to have max or mins. So now we've found our interior critical points. Now we need to check the boundary of our right cylinder. And so we can kind of split this up into three parts. We have the top of our cylinder, which is the disk of radius 3. We have the bottom of our cylinder, which is the disk of radius 3. Uh, and z is equal to positive 4 and negative 4, respectively. And then finally, we also have our sides, which is like a tube where z of circles of radius 3 and z varies from negative 4 to 4. And so naturally, we're going to have The di so we'll start with the disk on the top and bottom. So we have x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9 still. And we have our z value is plus or minus 4, depending on which uh, disk we're on. So for our top circle, so the top of our cylinder, that's when z is equal to 4. So if we plug that into our function f of x, y, z, uh, we have a function f of x, y. Is equal to x squared plus y squared minus x minus y minus 16. And similarly, if we plug in z equal to negative 4 into our function f of x, y, z, we actually also get the same function. So we can go ahead and say f bottom is equal to f top, um, and our function is given as stated earlier. OK, so now we want to see if there are any interior critical points of the disk. So we'll take the gradient function of f top, or this, similarly the same as f bottom. 
is equal to two x minus one, two y minus one. And we want to see where the gradient is equal to zero. Well, that occurs when x is equal to one half. and y is equal to 1 half. So um, both of our, our top and bottom circles, disks I should say, have an interior critical point where x is equal to 1 half and y is equal to 1 half and z is equal to plus or minus 4 depending on which disk we're on. So we can go ahead and add two more points of our list to check for max and min values. We have f of, x, f of 1 half, 1 half, 4, and f of 1 half, 1 half, negative 4. Okay, so we've checked the interior of our disk. Now we need to check the boundary of our disk, which is the circle of radius 3. So that is, so we'll go ahead, I'll just mark just so you know that, that's, that we're starting with the boundary here. So we need to let x squared plus y squared be equal to 9 to just get the circle around the top. And again, z is going to be plus or minus 4, depending on which circle we're at. So if we plug in x squared plus y, y squared equals 9 into our function f top and f bottom, we see that we get 9. Uh, well, let's go ahead and since we're working with just a circle, we'll go ahead and change into polar co coordinates. And we have x is equal to r cosine theta, where r is our radius, or 3, and y is equal to r sine theta, or 3 sine theta in our case. And z is equal to plus or minus 4 still. Okay, so again, we're going to plug into our function f top and f bottom for our x and y, and we get... I should also note that theta is going to be going from 0 to 2 pi. So we have a function f top circle and f bottom circle of theta is equal to negative 3 negative 3 cosine theta minus 3 sine theta for our negative x minus y. And then x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. Minus 16 is minus 7. And again, noting that our function for the top circle and bottom circle are the same since our z hasn't changed from before. So now we want to see if there are any critical points on the interior of our circle. So we'll just take the derivative since we're in a function of one variable. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, 3 sine theta. Derivative of sine is cosine, minus 3 cosine theta. And the 7 is a constant, so it goes to 0. So we're going to set this equal to 0 and see if we have any points that lie along this, or on this circle. So we see that we can simplify this down to sine theta is equal to cosine theta. And 
we know that that occurs at two points on the circle. At pi four, at theta equals pi fourths and theta equals five pi fourths. So we have two points on our circle. We can go ahead and plug in for our, into our x and y equations to get some critical points. So we have We'll just note that cosine of pi over 4 is square root 2 over 2, and similarly sine of pi fourths, since they're equal, is also square root 2 over 2. And cosine of 5 pi over 4 and sine are both negative square root 2 over 2. So when we plug in, we'll get either plus 3 square roots 2 over 2 or a minus square root 3 over 2. So we have a positive 3 square roots 2 over 2, comma 3 square roots 2 over 2, and a negative, oh, oops. A negative 3 square roots 2 over 2, and a negative 3 square roots 2 over 2. When we plug in 4 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, respectively. <clears throat> now remember that we're also working on both circles along the top and the bottom. So we need to also include the points where z is equal to plus 4 and minus 4 for each of these. So therefore we're going to have four points total. So we'll go ahead and add these to our list of points. <coughs> Okay, so we have, for our positive 3 square root 2 over 2 equations, we have z is equal to 4 and minus 4. And for our negative 3 square root 2 uh, points, we have z is equal to 4 and negative 4. So we added 4 more points to check for our max and mins. Okay, the last thing to do on our disk boundary is to check when theta is equal to 0 or theta is equal to 2 pi, but theta equals 0 is equal to 2 pi, so we just need to check the one point. So if theta is equal to 0, we have cosine 0 is 1, x is equal to 3, and y is equal to 0, since sine of 0 or 2 pi is equal to 0. So we also have the point xy is equal to 3, 0. And again, these points both occur on the top and bottom disks. So when we add our points, we have to add two points, one for z equals 4 and one for z equals negative 4. Okay, so we have one more, we have two more points there. Now we just need to check the points on the sides of our cylinder. So So 
So our points on the, th on the sides of our cylinder are the set of points where x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. And then z is now varying between negative 4 and 4. So we have our function fs for sides. And again, I'll recall that our function is given as is given as x squared plus y squared minus z squared minus x minus y. Now, we're, we have the constraint that x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. Um, so we can go ahead and plug that into our equation. And we have, again, we'll use polar coordinates. So we'll let x be equal to 3 cosine theta and y be equal to 3 sine theta, and z is going to still be neg between negative 4 and 4. So and we'll just let z be equal to z. OK, and our theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi again. OK, so now we'll plug into our function. And we'll receive a function f side of theta z, since our new function, our new variables are going to be theta and z, is going to be equal to 9 minus z squared. minus 3 cosine theta, minus 3 sine theta. And again, theta is running from 0 to 2 pi, and z is running from negative 4 to 4. So we want to see if there are any interior critical points of our function f side. So we'll take the gradient vector. And we'll take the partial derivative of f side with respect to theta. <coughs> and we get 3 sine theta minus 3 cosine theta, comma, negative 2z. And we want to see where our function, our gradient is equal to 0. Setting both of the components equal to zero, we see that we have sine theta is equal to cosine theta. And for our first component, that's what that tells us. And our second component tells us that z needs to be zero. So z is equal to zero. So we know that sine theta equals cosine theta when theta is equal to pi fourths and five pi fourths. And so we have theta equals pi fourths, theta equals five pi fourths, and z equals zero. So we can go ahead and plug in to our change of variables to get our x, y, and z term points. So we have if theta is equal to pi over 4, x is equal to <coughs> 3 square roots 2 over 2. <coughs> and y is also 3 square roots 2 over 2. And then finally, z is just 0. 
And then we also have when theta is equal to 5 pi fourths, and that's going to be negative 3 square roots 2 over 2, and negative 3 square roots 2 over 2 for x and y. And again, z is going to be 0. So we have two internal critical points on our function f side. So we can add them to our list. So we have So we have our two, two, we have two more points to check. And now we look at our boundary function, and we see that we're varying theta from 0 to 2 pi and z from negative 4 to 4. So if we wanted to check the boundary of our sides, we'd see that we could let z be equal to negative 4 and z be equal to 4, respectively. And we get these circles around the top disk, which we had already calculated and found our critical points on that boundary. So there's nothing really more to check since we've already done that work. We would just find the same points again. So we're done checking all of the boundary on our surface, and we just want to calculate our values to see where we have our max and mins. So I went ahead and already did that. I was filling our tables. So we have So we have negative 1 half, negative 16.5, negative 16.5, since our z term is squared, um, as long as the x and y terms are the same, our result will be the same by just changing the sign on the z. So again, for these two points, we have f is equal to negative 11.24. <coughs> and for these two points, again, we have f is equal to negative 2.76. Okay, we just have four more points to check. Okay, so we have negative 10 for both of these two points, and positive 4.76, and 13.24. So we see that it appears as though our point negative 3 square roots 2 over 2, negative 3 square roots 2 over 2 comma 0, is going to be our maximum. And our minimum is actually going to be two points at one half, one half, four, and one half, one half, negative four. So we found that we have one global maximum on our closed and bounded disk, and, or right cylinder, and we have two points that are equal are the minimum on our right cylinder and that those are the minimum and maximum of our function.